We need fanfare. We need some type of music. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. Uh, Here we are, live from the fireplace hey in the living room. Hey, everybody. We still have our Christmas decorations up. I'm going to be taking those down this weekend. I love Christmas, and so I hate having them just up for one month, four weeks. And um, yes, I am recovering from a nasty head cold. And <clears> Steve <throat> was just asking, do any of you have... Um, did you make it through the holiday season without getting a head cold or the flu? Because we know that can be tricky. Woo! So much going on. Uh, so anyway, I hope, I hope I'm getting extra rest and I'm on a rampage, I feel like, to just clean things out. So tonight's show, we're going to talk about eating healthier and mm. cleaning clutter and better budgeting. And so we're going to just start and hit on a bunch of different things because this, you know, January is a great time to look at the year and to set goals, not really New Year's resolutions, but just what do, what are some of the things I really want to conquer this year? My goal is to <clears throat> eat more sugar. Right. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you more about that in a little bit because, because I'm sort of. You're shedding. I'm shedding. Anyway, so let's let's jump into it. We, yeah, uh, we put up a blog post um, that talked about um, eating healthier. We used to call it sneaky ways to eat healthier, but it's um, eat healthy. I can't even remember the the name of it. That's <laughs> the most recent that blog. That's terrible. Uh, well, I'm gonna go there and get it for you. We are just tired. Friday night after a long week, it's just I'm really tired and having this cold just doesn't help. Amazing ways to save money and eat healthier this year. Sounds good to me. We got 12 tips. We aren't going to cover all 12 of them. <clears throat> We're going to cover three here, but we have more on the page. Mm. And uh, we're going to start with... Why don't you put a link up to that? We're going to start with sugar because um, it is... I'll give you a stat. Did you know, you know how much in 1822... Uh, and That's a long time ago. Almost, almost 200 years ago, right? 1820, yeah. 90, almost 200 years ago. The average American ate seven pounds of sugar a year. Golly. And you buy sugar in those three pound bags, right? Right. Three pounds. Used to no, be, they're four or five. Are they four or five? They're four or five. Uh, flour came in five pound bags and sugar came in smaller. Four, but four. yeah. I think okay. mostly four pound bags. Okay. Now. So the average American ate two four pound bags of sugar, and it was a treat. Unbelievable. Treat. How much do people eat today? So you guys kind of let us know. Give, give us your guess. Right. Give us your guess because for us, seven point two five pounds in eighteen twenty two. Now, if you go to our blog, the answer is there. Right. So just click on the link. But if you want to you know, go get the answer for sure, but if you just want to guess, um, what do we have for guesses? Let us know. So, um, see, Laura says she had a kidney transplant in June of 2017. Wow. Wow. I'm so glad you're still with us, Laura. Yep. Can you guys do a fireplace care, fireplace care on a budget? <laughs> oh. Uh, well, we just kind of clean ours out every once in a while. We haven't had the chimney cleaned in a while. Um, let's see. So, anybody guessing? How many pounds of sugar do Americans consume now basically it depends on how much let's go back to the fireplace for just a minute it just depends on how much wood you burn in arizona it's a very mild winter so we if we have a cold winter we'll go through a cord of wood throughout the entire winter places like vermont will go through 12 cords of wood in a, in a winter so i would just say be be brutal be very <clears throat> disciplined about cleaning out the ashes in your fireplace. Make sure you have an ash yeah. bucket and you clean it out regularly. There are people who actually spray the inside of the fireplace down and clean it with a with a scrub. Right, bucket. we don't. We, we haven't done that. We did have it cleaned a few years About ago. About every two or three years, we do have a chimney sweep come and and clean the the oh, flue. I guess I missed that. Okay. So so anyway, here's some guesses. Uh, Teresa says six pounds. Uh, now remember, in 1822, it was seven point two five five pounds. Kim says 40 pounds, Debbie says 25, Kristen says 40, um, Tasha says 35, Barb says 25. This is going to make your head spin. You're all off by about 100 pounds. What? Yeah. 
124 pounds of sugar per person in it's, America. Wow. And we wonder why diabetes and obesity is is rampant. You know, wow. because there, there's sugar in everything. There's sugar in ketchup. There's sugar in, um, well, soda, obviously. And I, I think, that's my personal opinion, that, that um, store-bought recipes are actually putting more sugar in than they did 20 or 30 years ago because people's taste has increased. Right. So one of our tricks <clears throat> is, I mean, we'll give you a few of them. Like for cereal, when our kids were here, we buy healthy cereal. You know, we buy like Cheerios, Cheerios the plain Cheerios, or or corn uh, flakes. Yeah, corn or flakes. A life. Well, life was kind of it had or Rice Krispies. Um, I like bran just to keep me regular. Right. And then we said you could mix half and half with a sweet cereal because we got to be right. realistic. You know, because uh, we, we like sugar. But, but well, you know and we didn't want our us. kids. We didn't want to be so strict mm -hmm. that our kids just <clears> left. They got they went ballistic when they left our home. We wanted them. To be able to have something that you know other families do, but we just tried to do it in moderation. Right. So we mixed the two together and about half and half, and the kids complied with it, and they got their sweet tooth fix, and they also got a good amount of fiber. And so, who was it that was over at somebody's house? One of the kids, yeah, and they did the same thing there. And the parents were looking at them like, "You're strange," but but they did it, and it was right. It was normal for them. Right, it was normal it was for a them. Good, good habit. I can't remember. Um, okay, another thing I've done um, is is I take uh, oatmeal and I don't put sugar in it anymore. I used to. I used to measure a tablespoon of sugar. That's one point on Weight Watchers if you, if you measure. And and now I, I we freeze um, cherries, blueberries, some pineapple, uh, strawberries, blackberries. And I just put some frozen fruit in my oatmeal and we don't need the sugar. No. It's just, it's it's refreshing. Uh, here's another one. I, we were mixing up, uh, we had a New Year's Eve party, and we have a recipe for pineapple lemonade, which I'll give you the link to. It's really good, but I, I was being sneaky because I knew we were going to do this broadcast, so I, um, I didn't tell Annette I was doing this. She gave me the recipe, and I cut the sugar in half, and I let a couple of people taste it without telling them what, what I'd done. And they're going, this is really good. Now it's got a lot of sugar in it. It has a soda pop. Two, two liters, liters of soda. soda. It has a can of frozen pineapple. Uh, well, it was a nature's own, and it was a pineapple mango, I think. Yeah. And you're supposed to dilute that with four cans of water. Mm -hmm. And then it has uh, two cups of lemon juice. Well, we right. would make up our lemonade recipe from scratch and add that. Or you can use country time lemonade right. powder. But but it, and it called for two cups of sugar. Well, I put less than a cup of sugar in it and it just it was great so you can get by by cutting back a little bit i mean even chocolate chip cookies if you do the toll house recipe if you cut it back a little bit you really won't miss the sugar right so that's a one bit cut the sugar mm -hmm. so so you can get from uh, 124 pounds of sugar a year down to maybe 100 right um the other one is drink more water and really honestly we don't go out of the house without a water bottle now this is Arizona, but uh, you know it's it's a good idea everywhere. And actually, I'm thirsty, so yeah. Let me take a break. <clears throat> um, do you know what the average cost of a gallon of filtered water at the grocery store is? <clears throat> a gallon. A gallon. I thought it was around ninety nine cents. Or a dollar ninety nine. No, it's 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 more it's more than ninety nine cents. A little more. It's about a dollar twenty two average. Now, when we 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 used to have a reverse osmosis system, and I didn't like how much space it took up under the sink, and I found out that it, for every gallon it makes, it wastes four gallons. Right. Uh, and that really I bothered to, me. I should have brought in a box of tissues. Okay. Excuse me. She's gonna go take care of her cold, and I'll keep keep talking. <clears throat> so we we got rid of the reverse osmosis system, and I put in. A triple filtration uh, water filter system under the sink, which takes up less space, and it filters the water amazingly, and it costs way less. And uh, if we put that in, I'll give you a link to what we bought. And we have just enjoyed purified water for years, 
and our cost is well the cost of the system was about 50 or 60 dollars um, if you search around and look for i can't remember what, what the microbial filter size was but there's a certain size that you, know, you want to get down like 70 or something like that so you check the size of the microbial filter to make sure that it, it gets out all the impurities but the water tastes great and it costs very little to run and it doesn't waste anything and then we we just use water bottles so you know rather than spending i don't know 10 20 dollars a week on water you know if you want to be healthy and drink your 64 fluid ounces a day we use the filter and then we wash our water bottles once a week uh, even though i'm oh, sorry <laughs> Even though um, you know we try to be neat and clean, there's still goo that gets stuck under under the, the edges. And so we go in with a, a bottle brush and clean it with soap and clean the inside with soap. And that way you don't end up with all kinds of bacteria growing there and, and grody stuff. And I need to clean it, and I usually do it on Sunday. So yes. <clears throat> that's coming. Um, and here's another great thing about drinking water and getting the filter system is that um, – about 23% of the plastic water bottles that people consume uh -huh. get recycled. Yes. The rest of them are thrown in the trash and go into landfills. And there are 50 billion water bottles disposed of every year. Which is terrible. It's terrible. We have a friend who recycles them, and people right. from all around uh, the valley bring it to him, and he, he gets money for them, but it, there's not a lot of money in it. Right. And it takes up a lot of space. So, so if stop you, using those. If you've got a recycling program, too, by your house, like we have two cans, the regular trash and the recycle. So if you're really diligent about putting your plastic bottles in the recycle, that's certainly going to help. But if you can cut back on buying bottled water, you'll save money and you'll save the environment as well. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay. So I want to talk well, about let's, what? Let's take a break and let's see oh, answer some, some questions. comments on it. All right. Say hi. Um, so Andrea is from South Dakota. She said she hasn't had the flu. Good for you, uh, She Andrea. guessed 35 pounds on, on sugar, and she was way off. Okay. But, but that's okay, because I hope you only consume 35 right. pounds. Uh, she says her son has always hated candy and fruit. He doesn't even like the smell of anything sweet. That's kind of weird. Wow. Uh, and then uh, uh, she guessed 89 cents a gallon for water. And she has a distiller. That's interesting. I haven't heard of a distiller. Uh -huh. But distilling is the process of boiling right. and catching the the um, the steam and then draining it off. Yes. And, and that supposedly purifies the water. And it's great for using in your iron. Yeah, and for your iron. Yep. Yep. Right. So Probably yeah. your humidifier if you have a yes. humidifier. Yes. You won't get filled up there. Okay. Um, let's see who else. Um, 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 we have snow is coming in Pennsylvania. Teresa has a cold. Uh, um, let's go up here. Those are the guesses. Um, oh, Emily guessed 125 pounds because she went to the article, probably read that. Um, <laughs> everybody's saying, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, sugar is in everything. That's yeah. true. Uh, let's see what else. So that, that's about it for comments. Uh, Teresa, go down to the bottom. Teresa has guessed $2 a gallon for water. In some places, it is that expensive. Okay. So, all right. On to the so next I'm going to move on to the next. I'm going to need your your hands to hold things up, okay? okay? Um, if you want to try to get more fruits and veggies into your diet, um, one of the easiest ways to do that. Oh, we forgot citrus. I'm going to go get it. Okay, is to buy what's in season. You've heard me say that over and over and over. So the winter time is a great time for citrus, um, oranges and grapefruits and. You know, if you've got anybody that lives in a warmer climate, trade oh. them. Say, hey, you send me citrus in a in a flat rate post box, and I'll send you X Y Z, whatever it is, when when it wherever you live, whenever that is in season. So we, um, we just <coughs> picked these today. These are our tangelos. Yes. And these are the little the little navel on them. Yep. Cute. And then we picked some grapefruit. Right. And you picked some regular oranges. I did. And we leave these out on the table for anybody who comes by to, to share. To eat. And we just mailed some to a friend in Colorado. Yes. Actually, a lot of you know her, Tara from Living on a Dime. We traded our um, citrus. Anyway, so for more fruits and vegetables, definitely go with what's in season. Pineapple, I think, is in season now. 
in the winter time. And in the spring, you're going to be looking at artichokes, asparagus, strawberries. Um, apples are not tasting their best right now, although with well, winter was a good time for apples. Uh, fall is really apple mm -hmm. season, and winter is kind of the end of that. So, um, although with now with the technologies they have, um, you know, you can pretty much buy them year round. But, mm -hmm. you know, try to get more fiber, and if you could hold up some of those things on the table, that would be great. That's another way to, to add a little bit more healthy into your diet. Those were given to us, but. But prunes and raisins are a great way. Us a message? Who's no. your favorite dish? Prunes and raisins are a great way to um, get more fiber into your diet. And um, you don't want to overdo it with the prunes, but two a day keeps everything moving just great. Your, your grandpa swore by those. Yep. And then and um, two, and two ba and a banana a day. Cause, right. Cause for the potassium. Yeah, for the potassium. You live to be 96. <clears throat> yep. And then for raisins, if you have old ones, Soak them in boiling water for a few minutes to reconstitute them um, for baking. They raisin oatmeal cookies are the best, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, and then you can sneak raisins into other things. Raisins are great with apples, chopped up apples yep. and oatmeal. Um, and then you want to talk about those articles that you had yes. there. Those are great. Yeah, I'll share these. Okay. Um, there's an organization that every year puts out a list called the Dirty Dozen. And the clean fifteen, and this is this is basically um, for people who want to avoid pesticides and go more organic. <clears throat> there are certain fruits and vegetables that don't that are so hardy that they don't get pesticides put on them, and things like avocados and um, papayas yeah, and you list them um, while I, while I yep. this. Okay, avocados, papayas, bananas. Um, mangoes, I'm trying to think of the other ones that have lots of skins. Chime in if you can, if you can remember some of those. But they they really don't use pesticides. Don't they? Don't need to use pesticides right. on those. So you know, if you want to eat more healthy and organic, don't waste your organic dollars on those. Right. But the top of the list for the dirty dozen, and there's this organization. It's the uh, ewg.org. Uh, they say, look, we're not saying don't eat any of the dirty dozen, but focus more of your dollars on organic for these things that tend to get more pesticides on them, and then focus more of your eating and your spending on the clean 15 because they're better for you. Right. Uh, but the top of the dirty dozen, the two things that just stuck out to me were strawberries and spinach. Oh, yeah. And those are both things that Highly we, perishable. But those are both things that we've grown. Yes. Ourselves, and you can do that, and you can make sure that they don't get any pesticides when you grow them. So, the, but, but the key is, and this was supported with a Consumer Reports article that we cited in this book when we I talked had about you bill in half. Yeah, when we talked about uh, organics, is that Consumer Reports said, take your money and spend your organic dollars on things that are not as hardy that do get pesticides. The high, most highly perishable right. things. And so, so if you do that, your your money will go further. Don't, don't spend your money for organic bread. Make your own. Uh, don't spend it on organic pineapple because it doesn't get pesticides. Those kind of ideas is, is what they're talking about. And it, it will really oh. help you save money on eating healthy. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about tonight, oh gosh, is cleaning out clutter. Because January is a great time to look at the coming year and say, what do I need to do? Most of us in January, we've just come off the holidays. We have a little bit of extra time. Um, it, you know, in many places around the country, it's, it's cold. Um, so, uh, yeah. So this is a good time to be indoors and doing things. Let me name some of the things that I accomplished this last year, which I'm pretty excited about. We have been switching out our, our all of our VHSs. We've been looking for DVDs to replace them. Mm -hmm. And I am, I know a lot of you are even beyond us and you're just doing MP3s and digital but we still like the physical. And so I have gotten rid of so many um, VHSs. And as a matter of fact, I went through a drawer that we had in the family room where there were old VHSs with movies we had literally taped off the TV. And <laughs> I looked at them and I said, let's make a list of the ones that are on here that we really would like to have. And then we're going to get rid of them. I boxed them up. I took them to Goodwill. The thing I like about Goodwill is if they can't use it or they can't put it out, 
they know where to recycle it. So um, that makes me feel really good about dropping stuff off at Goodwill. So I went through a ton of VHSs mm -hmm. and we got rid of a ton of stuff, cleared, I think, two drawers in our whole TV cabinet. And it's just been a really good thing to do. And then we took our list and we, we made a list of the movies we want to buy. And we've slowly been buying them either at Goodwill. We keep mm -hmm. a list in Evernote. We share the list so that we can make sure that we ha have a movie or don't have a movie that we want to pick up. We've also been using our swag buck earnings. Yes. We take and we've got we got about a hundred dollars worth of credit on Amazon, so we're going to use that to, to buy, buy movies, the movies there. And then there's some time. chains here, like Half Price Books and um, Bookman's is a big. There's two locations in Arizona, one in Mesa and one in Phoenix, and we have found great deals on movies because we really like the old classics, mm -hmm. and so we well, have found we, great deals. We really like the, the shop. Oh, Shop the new the Christmas movies, old new <clears throat> Christmas movies that we watched this year was The Shop Around the Corner with Jimmy Stewart. It's an old black and white. Great movie. And then The Bishop's Wife. The Bishop's Wife. I can't believe that with Cary Grant. We had never seen that before. Mm -hmm. And that was a great movie. And <clears throat> so those are going to be ones we're going to put on our wish list. Anyway, music is another thing I went through. I reorganized all of our CDs um, mm -hmm. and, um, and got rid of quite a few... Um, cassettes even. Okay, puzzles. I went through all of our puzzles and I told the kids, what do you want? I sent stuff to the kids' house and then the rest of it I gave to another homeschooling family or I donated it and um, or I took it to some of our consignment stores actually and consigned it. These are things that just accumulate over the years with kids. And yes. We hadn't gotten rid of. What <laughs> I still have yet to do is my Tupperware closet where I keep all my plastic containers, our cleaning supplies because people have moved over the years and given us their cleaning supplies. So I need to get that all organized. Um, I have also, you know, it's right after Christmas. So I went to put all the wrapping stuff away. And we mm. spent one night just reorganizing all of the wrapping stuff. And I threw quite a bit away. I was very proud uh, of her. Pieces of wrapping paper that I have no rolls to go with and they're too small for anything. Like sometimes I would keep small bits of wrapping paper in a patch, like if you need something around the ends of a package or something, but I just cleaned stuff out and I went from three upright containers with rolls to down to one, which I am so happy about because mm -hmm. I had emptied out a lot of rolls, but had left them in there to save space and we burned them in the fireplace. Oh, can you stoke that fire? I can. Okay. Um, to... Um, it just felt so good, and I just I reorganized all of that, and just really got it um, usable. And I found some stuff I didn't know I had, so I'm just like, oh, this will be wonderful for next year. Um, what we've been doing for wrapping with the kids is now that they all have their own families, they I just pick one kind of wrapping paper for each family, and I'm like, okay, this is your color wrapping paper, this is your color wrapping paper, and our youngest daughter Abby loves the comics. She loves wrapping her Christmas presents in comics. So I always wrap her Christmas presents in comics because that's what we did for many years when the kids were growing up. Um, the linen closet is another thing that I have also gone through this last year, but we're still working on, you know, redesigning our guest rooms and our beds and bedrooms. And so I, it, it's almost time for me to redo the linen closet again uh, with a final gyration. So you know, why don't you throw up on the newsfeed what, name one thing that you can reorganize this year. Something that you can clean out of your clutter um, and reorganizing and feel good about because it does feel good when you go through stuff and then you just get rid of stuff and reorganize everything so it's more usable. It's an amazing thing. Did you talk about the linen closet? I did. I just talked about it while you were so redoing it. So and I asked the video okay. and the, the posting. We do have a video on that. So yeah, so throw up one thing that you want to reorganize this year. Um, and let's see what you all come up with. That'll be fun. Because um, all of you can think of one thing to do. And a lot of times we'll do <clears> projects <throat> while we're sitting and watching those old movies at night. Like especially our silk plants. I'll take a silk plant, put it on the table in a bucket of soapy water, and I'll just wash the silk plant. I'll give it a good bath. While I'm watching a movie, it's a mindless thing to do. What are people throwing up there? Uh, 
Teresa says she wants to clean out her bedroom closet. Yeah, that's a great one, clothes uh, closet. Another Teresa says, I need to hit my craft room. Oh, yes. Craft supplies. Do I, I got rid of two bins of craft supplies, okay. Emily says, Remy, Lily, and I are watching. <laughs> uh, Teresa says, hello from North Carolina. By the way, we are going to be in oh, yeah. South Carolina. We are going to be in South Carolina the first weekend in February. So if you have any friends or family, in the area, we'll be in the Charleston area at Summer Brook Church in Somerville. Please come visit us. We would love to meet you. And if you have one of our books, bring them and we'll sign them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. <coughs> Laura Ford says, cook from scratch is less difficult on the body. So that's back to the eating healthy. Um, yes. Brenda says she takes raisins to work every day. Yeah. Uh, Joanna <coughs> says, in Minnesota, it's a whopping minus 10. Woo! Woo! Uh, uh, Janine says, I wish we could grow that this time of year, tangelos in Indiana. Uh, you know, they have, um, they have dwarf trees that if you're careful with them, you could grow indoors. But really, in Some all, spots. in all truth, in Indiana, okay, so you can't grow citrus, but, but you, you guys grow. can grow berries, I think, out there. Uh -huh. And you have corn right off the farms and that we are not going to get. Yeah. Peach so <clears throat> you don't have what we have, but you have something different that is equally as awesome. Okay. And they have more windmills than we do. Yes. <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. So did you all chime in? Are you all letting us know what you want to clean out this last year? Just pick one thing. Sheila says four containers, 50 years of family photos. Wow. Oh that, that's oh. a tough one. That uh, is a tough one. Kristen says last year I tackled the kitchen. It was so worth it. It does. It feels yes, so good. Yes, it does feel so good. Uh, let's see. Barb Norman says my kitchen pots and pans and lids. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Amanda says, I need to go through kids' books. Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh. I did that. Janine Wishmeyer says, uh, my bathroom closet, it has become a storage closet. Things thrown everywhere. You know, we, we all have that. You know what amazes me? When I get into these, um, into these reorganizing projects, I always feel like so overwhelmed at first. And I think, oh... Actually, for me, I think this is going to take six hours. And a lot of times, I'm done in two. So, And then there's other days I come home and you go, I didn't get anything Well, done. one of the other things that we're doing that we forgot to talk about is we're trying to deal with our filing cabinet. Um, again, I know a lot of the millennials don't do anything on paper, but I like to have a paper trail for <clears> stuff. <throat> Medical bills, dental, work, um, you know, banking. We're trying to keep less of that and bur burn it. Winter... <coughs> is the perfect time to go through your papers, your filing cabinets, and burn your stuff because you're yeah. running your fireplace. So um, it's the perfect time. So gosh, we have been through tons of file mm -hmm. folders. And when you're not sure what to keep, like like we thought, well, we should keep um, a record that we paid our, our medical premiums. But if you keep the first month of the year and the last month of the year, mm -hmm. you can get rid of everything else because it proves you've had it the whole year, basically. Mm -hmm. um, same with bank statements. They've said you can keep your first of the year and your last of the year and get rid of everything else. Charitable giving statements. Most places will send you a summer. A one-year a one year summary. One page yeah. to get rid of that other thing. Uh, get rid of the monthly charitable yeah. giving things. Yeah. So it feels so good to go through our filing cabinet, and I know we have more to go. We've got file folders on warranty stuff where we've stored, but then there's times when things break and they die and or you give them away or – or mm -hmm. donate them, and you will no longer have that item. So, you know, from time to time, Steve will go through the warranty folder. So there's all kinds of things, but this is definitely the time to go through at least your filing cabinet to, because, yeah. like I said, you're running your fireplace, Sticking and you up. can burn it. Yeah. So Kay says she's going through paperwork, medical bills, and teaching resources. Oh my yes. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Emily says, I did my filing cabin today. All utilities and other papers are organized. Yay, Emily. Yay. Um, Linda says, underneath my bathroom sink. Oh, now here's. Oh. We haven't posted that article. No, we, have, but we haven't done it yet. We wanted to do a video yeah. on it. But we, I built little boxes under, that go under the A U-shaped shelf, basically. Yeah, that fits next to the pipe. The plumbing. And so now we can stack things on the bottom and on top. You get more and one of the things that works great under sinks, and we'll have to shoot a video of this, 
is shoe boxes. Don't forget, shoe boxes are amazing for organizing. Mm -hmm. um, I have one shoe box full of lotions and one shoe box full of shampoos and conditioners. These are all things that These came are, from hotels. Yeah, some of them are the tiny trial size from hotels. Um, anyway, so we'll have to do that at some point, but it feels so good to organize, you guys, and it's not as hard as you think. Mentally, it feels overwhelming, but then once you get into it, it's easier than you think. And there have been times when I just needed to do something quick, and I literally went through my clothes closet and pulled 30 items that I no longer liked or wore and put them in a bag and donated them. Um, we have so much in America, so much. There's so much we can go through and clean out. Okay, but we have to get through the last one. So we've talked about eating healthier, cleaning clutter, oh, wait, wait. and budgeting says, better. Elizabeth says she's got to clean out her basement so she can convert it into a playroom. And this is her first time visiting with us. Oh, so Elizabeth, that's here. a great goal, though. A really great goal. And one of the things you can do is get shelving to go up the walls. And, and, and then you can buy the, the clear bins and make sure you label everything. For the playroom. Uh, right, for it to clear out your, your basement to make a playroom. I'm assuming maybe for grandkids or something. Well, maybe but, for her own kids. But definitely worth it. Definitely yeah. worth it. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, so one, one other person said, we downsized into a one and a half bed unit, so we're forced to downsize. One rule is one thing in, two go out. Oh, nice. That's, there's a, there's that a is movement uh, a, a lot of young millennials are going to is the... Minimalism. The, the minimalism in the small house. Yes. And there's something freeing about having less stuff. You don't right. have to clean it. You don't have to store it. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, you don't want to go overboard. And when you have kids, it's a little bit it's more tricky. difficult. It is tricky. We, we watched a video about a couple that had a small house, and they still had to build a shed where they kept the toys... Because the kids wanted the toys, they had to go outside into the shed to get them and bring them in. They kept some toys in the house, and then the rest of the well. And, and I don't want to judge because everybody picks their own lifestyle. But this one family, everybody slept in one room, kids mm -hmm. and parents. And then the second mm -hmm. bedroom was just a kid. One that I saw was a kid's playroom, and I'm not okay with that. And I know there's a lot of young families that are okay with that. And I'm not judging you. I'm just saying I'm not comfortable with that. So our kids. We always had two kids to a room, and we had a lot of kids, and two of them were adopted. And so we have a big house, and it worked for us. And we homeschooled. So our kids played with their toys, but we spent time at home, and we had a system, and we had or we were organized. And, and our Kids and Money book, which I don't have in front of me, mm -hmm. but it talks all about how to organize kids' toys and, 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 and the kinds of toys that we bought for our kids. Um, and we, we focus mostly what? on sets that you could build on. So right, we always buy them to. more Legos, or, right, or more connects, or different things, different sets. American Girl stuff, different. or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to budgeting better. We could have spent all night on cleaning clutter for yeah. sure. But it sounds but. like all you guys have focus, and you're moving to clean out linen closets and and organize kitchen closets and papers and everything. And that is a great thing, it is. and it's going to feel wonderful when yes. you're done. Yes, yes. Uh, it's it's just always always fun. It's so easy, uh, it's so easy to get stuff and accumulate things. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's a cleanse. And it's it hard to just really stay on top of it when life gets busy or the kids get sick or it it is hard. To, it's a, it's a constant effort of staying on top of it. So let's talk about money, uh -huh. because one of the one of the big. Um, New Year's resolutions a lot of people make is, I'm going to get out of debt this year. I'm right. going to start a budget. Right. And it, it's, it's a wonderful goal, but it's oftentimes difficult because you need, you need to change so much of your thinking. And, and our kind of bottom line philosophy since day one of our marriage is that if we didn't have the money, we wouldn't spend it. And if we had a need and we wanted something and the money wasn't there, then we would wait. We would look for other options. We would ask people and we'd pray and, and see what would happen. And but again, budgeting, if you've never done it before, there's a learning curve for it. But it really is not that hard. I think people need to get over thinking, ah, oh, this is money. I'm just going to scream because I'm afraid and I don't know what to do. And Because a lot of people think budgeting is 
is a, a restriction. It's, it's, it's a noose around your neck. Or they think that it's like a one size fits all. So, so there's one budget that everybody has to live by and there isn't because everybody has different priorities for their money. So, so let's talk about budgets that work. Yeah, and so there's tons of options out there, tons. If you are younger, you're probably gonna like some of the online budgeting systems. And I'd really like to write an, an, a blog article about it and I haven't yet, because there's there are probably half a dozen at least of out there good ones, yeah. of good ones. There's envelope, there's mint, there's every dollar, there's good budget. Mm -hmm. The thing I like about good budget is it's it doesn't um, automatically capture your um, checking account. It's not, it's not linked to your, to your bank account. So <clears throat> it is an extra step. But if you want that barrier of uh, privacy, it doesn't. And if, but if you're a young millennial and you're used to like doing everything digitally, then envelopes, which takes every purchase that you make and immediately puts it into an account. No, no, you have to. You still have to manually well, assign it. Right, but it, but but every dollar has to be accounted for. Yeah. I guess is what I'm saying. Then, um, then that's a great system. And there, so let's let's back it up. Because the system is is one thing, but but knowing what your budget is is another. And and so what a lot of people do when they get into financial mode of I'm gonna get on a budget, I am gonna cut spending down to the bare minimum because we're gonna save money and we're gonna pay off debt. And the problem is it's kind of like holding your breath. And and you can only do it so long, and then all of a sudden <sighs> you have to gasp. And you go back to your old habits. It, it's it's not sustainable. So what we encourage people to do is to get. Um, we have a sheet in our budget system. It's called our income outgo sheet. And, and we've and seen a lot of. Hold on. We've seen a lot of other budget systems, and ours asks more questions than anybody else's does. Right. Because what we do is we plan for ninety percent of the expenses, in not just the monthly expenses, but annual things like. Birthday presents, vacations, Christmas gifts, um, you know, kids activities, yeah. you name it. But the thing is, our budget system is a paper budget system. So if you like pen and paper, this is a great thing. If you are not a pen and paper person, then you'll be frustrated with our budget system. But regardless of what budget you use, you've got to get a, a bottom line balance between what's coming in and what's going out. So you need to calculate in your cell phone, what you're spending on on um, cable TV or or Netflix or whatever, uh, your utility payments, your uh, if you pay your auto insurance every six months, you need to break it down into the monthly. Now, say, or when say, you're eating out, what are you really spending eating out if you're picking up that Starbucks? What is that costing you on a weekly basis? You really have to scrutinize every dollar, um, every 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 expenditure that you're making. Expenditure. Whatever. And um, and you've got to really look at it because a lot of times people are quote unquote wasting money because they're just not aware of where it's going and what they're doing. And when you think about how to organize and prioritize your money, knowing where it's going is probably 75 percent of the battle. Let's, let's take an example like medical expenses. Yes. So if you have insurance, right, which we're all supposed to have, or or some type of cost sharing uh, system, how do you calculate what you should be saving every month for for medical expenses? Right. So if you have, let's say you have two kids and two adults, right, and you you're pretty healthy, so you're all going to go to the doctor at least once a year. At least. And so if you have a thirty five dollar copay, you know that's one hundred and forty dollars. Right. And then then let's throw in one extra sick visit. You see what I'm doing? Right. So that's, so that's another right. So you've got a, It's just a little analytical game. And then you, you know if you have a deductible, you have to add that into right. the mix. But let's just say we're going for sick visits. So that's two hundred eighty dollars a year. That's about twenty one dollars, twenty two dollars a month. So that becomes your medical budget. But you can also need stuff for medications, prescriptions, yep. medications, those kind of things. So if you, if you take those numbers and work it a close guesstimate, you're going to be a lot closer than if you don't do it. I would say easily a family should be putting aside fifty dollars a month, right? Just for those copays and prescriptions, and that's not even including the insurance premiums. That's right. on top right. of insurance premiums. Right. So so that's how we work things. Even you can do that with gifts. Yes, our gift budget 
was for birthdays and Christmas presents. And we sat one time and we calculated how many we were buying. We put a dollar value on each right. one. We added it up, added in a few uh, uh, extra birthday presents. Weddings, uh, weddings baby, baby showers. showers. And then we divided it by 12 and that became what we had to save each month. Yes. And it's it served us well. Yes. And, and so we aren't hit by surprise when it's time to go to a wedding. We don't go, oh, what are we going to do? We have stuff in the gift closet. We do have stuff in the gift closet. have the money set aside. And if, if you want privy to what we get for weddings, go back on our YouTube channel and look at my Black Friday haul. Because mm -hmm. I, on, the, on that Black Friday haul video mm -hmm. is where I talk about a lot of the things that I will buy on Black Friday to put aside for wedding presents. So we're, we're going to anywhere from two to five weddings a year. And it's never a stress financially or emotionally because I have the items already tucked away in my gift closet. So budgeting, one of the, the keys besides getting your numbers close uh -huh. to start, they don't have to be exact to start. They will become exact over right. time. The second part of, of budgeting is being consistent with it. And so basically twice a month on the 1st and the 15th, we do our budget. And we describe how we do the budget in America's Cheapest Family Gets You Right. This is our first book. Right. And it's available at your public library. So you can check it out there. And if your library doesn't have it, you can put in a request for them to get it. It's also on sale on Amazon. And yes. we were uh, on the bestseller list, we were number 60,000. It's uh, last week, we are number 8,000 right now. So right. lots and of, of people have been buying it. Right. And of course, you can get it from us, and we will autograph it for you if you want to buy it from us. Yeah. And that's available on our website at moneysmartfamily.com. But we do have a special deal going right now. We do. Where if you buy both of these, you don't have to pay for shipping. And that saves Well, you, you end up paying for shipping, but the discount is almost the price of the book. You end up getting the price of the yeah, book. There's no book. shipping on it. And so it's like the price of this is free. When you buy both of them together, we don't charge any shipping. So that's, it, you, it's the same thing. It just works. That's out. confusing. That's going to confuse people when okay. you say it like that. There's right. a discount, so you basically get this book for free when you buy it. All right. So the key is, number one, get your numbers close. Number two, do it consistently. Twice a month. Yes. If you were to spend two hours twice a month, four hours a year, four hours a month, 48 hours a year, your finances would be in top notch yes, shape. They would. You would never go back to living the way you are if you're frustrated. If you're living life. paycheck to paycheck. Even if you're, you know, you could be um, unemployed, on disability, you could be having to live with a very low budget. You could also be earning good money, but spending <clears throat> every penny of it. So there's no savings in the bank. And anytime there's a, a pet emergency or a medical emergency for yourself, it's a crisis because there's no savings. Um, it, there's just no extra money in the bank. Let's just tell our story because when we first really got married, when we, when we first got married, I was earning $6 and 50 cents an hour and that was managing our home and setting it up and we $838 a month saved home, but we used the same system we're using now. Within three years, we'd saved $7,000 to buy a house. We put 15% down. We paid off that house in nine years on an average income of about $33,000 while we were in that house. And we had, we'd never earned higher than the national average. We had, we had years when we earned more, but our full average income was about $44,000 a year for all of our marriage. Yet we've been able to manage what we have and control our overhead because we've had the budget and because we've made a commitment that we wouldn't borrow any money. We, we've never had a car payment. We've never- We've paid, had a mortgage, but we've paid them off early. Very quickly. Very quickly. We paid we paid less in interest and principal on our first home than we sold it for. And most people Which is can't crazy. Do that. So okay. we're telling you this budgeting system, this one or envelopes, if right. you use it, it will serve you so And we well. have links in the description. Yeah. Um in the news feed and then in in the YouTube video we have we have links for well, our I'm Put, a, put up an article we wrote on budgeting that will have all the links to these different And things. our blog at moneysmartfamily.com has tons of budgeting articles that we've been putting up that you can read that would be really an encouragement to you. Now, we did do a video on how to get out of debt, and um, it's called Destroy Debt Forever. And in that, we talked about how there are multiple things you can do. One of them is budgeting, but another one is saving big chunks of cash and then negotiating with your creditors for a lump sum payoff. 
So if you combine uh, stockpiling cash by selling things, managing your money, and then negotiating, you can usually get out of debt in 18 months. It takes work, but you don't have to work three and four jobs. This is where we disagree with Dave Ramsey. We love his stuff. We love his enthusiasm, but we don't think that the families should be that are in debt need to start working day and night to pay it off. Where if they work smarter, not harder, they will yes. be successful. Yep. And it's it's going to take some creativity. It's going to take some sacrifice. But I don't think working so hard that you never see each other is the answer. It's not a good thing for your family or your kids. Okay, we're going to wrap up the show tonight. Thank you for joining us. And we will be back next week. We don't know what we're doing next we week. We don't know what we're doing next week, so, but we'll have something. So check out our website. We always put a banner yes. ad up on the homepage and several other pages that tell what the topic is in the time. Yes. It should be next Friday. Right. And remember, on January, um, we're speaking two times here coming up. January 27th is a Saturday morning. We're speaking in Gilbert, Arizona at um, uh, the Financial Hope Conference with Linda Hammond, who is the garage sale gal, and Bob Blader, who does... Um, financially free seminars and then the following week we're flying to South Carolina and we will be speaking at Summerbrook Church in Somerville South Carolina that's near Charleston so please let your family and your friends know um, and obviously if you're over there we would love to meet you so um, we're looking forward to seeing you and we'll be back again next week and we will answer every question that's asked yes. on the feed. So if you have other questions, just hang in there. We'll get to them. We're so grateful you showed up tonight. Yes. It was great spending time with you. Thank you for sharing uh, your life with us and telling and, us your stories and what you're going to clean up. Right. And it's Annette and uh, Steve. Economy is from MoneySmartFamily.com. Good night. Eat clean. Good, good. You can keep talking because you're still taking notes. <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, wait. I have almost nothing left. Still alive. There we go. Bye.